So for our FC25, it seems to be evolutions are going to be quite a big thing. We've got a consistent amount, to be fair, and there is a few that have expired by now. If we have a look at the expired ones, we've got five already that have gone. Obviously, some of them being the Sprint Supreme, Power Surge, Glow Up, the Octopus, and From Box to Box. But we've still got... 13 that are still available now a couple of them are obviously the club member reward We've got the ultimate edition the intro to stat limits and we are going to get on the 1st of November a Bellingham What is it like a a Bellingham type evolution? So I'm assuming it's gonna be very Bellingham-esque So if we just have a quick look of him if you need coins in FC 25 lootbar.gg has you covered they are the cheapest trading platform on the game, 8 to 10% cheaper than any others, 8% off if you use the code JT11 at the end at checkout, plus you get 5% extra on coins. With the fastest delivery system going, used by many FC25 creators such as Zorki, Manny Plus, and even Pro Owners. So if you need any coins, head over to lootbar.gg, make sure JT11's in the promo code, and... Hopefully you enjoy. I can imagine it will be either towards, I doubt the play style plus, but more towards kind of like the roles and then also how the stats are lined up. So maybe some sort of center mid cam box to box esque sort of card. That one's going to be interesting regardless. We seem to be getting more and more of them. But we are now starting to see pop ups of someone like this where uh, it's what, a 69 rated card can get a consistent amount of stats across the board. Like there is multiple options you can go with. Now, obviously this does require saving a few of the evolutions and it's one thing to always get into your mind that you don't always have to go with the best option so for instance if we went for great Guti, you could have easily gone with a menu straight away you could have gone with a fabinho a kessi an enzo but if you are looking to evolve a specific team maybe you're looking at trying to get a bronze card from 60 rated all the way up to 90 by the end of the game. Maybe you're trying to make a whole team of it I reckon in this game you probably can but with obviously uh, some of the best players You can get some very decent outcomes. We've already seen a Furlan Mendy get an upgrade now There is more to that which I am Happy with and also it's going to be an interesting uh, kind of part once we get into team of the year then eventually into team of the season on where it leaves evolutions because this is fine to start with when you look at a lot of the popular players. We're looking at somebody like Endrick at the start doesn't have a big upgrade yet. Correa doesn't. Delo now does. Joel Linton, we've got Anaki Williams. Nunez who can be evolved into the ultimate edition. So it's... It's great for that starting uh, kind of rating, but once we get into, like, the, for instance, if we look at the players right now, if we go, uh, so we go for page three, I'm assuming, once we now get into these sorts of cards where we've got a 90 Verts, we've got a 90 Dybala, we've got Alvarez, we've got Roberto Carlos, Messi, Lewandowski, that are going to be way above all these evolutions when do the evolutions get to that point and what cards do we have then? Because that's going to be where it's really hard to do the two objectives that EA want. They want you to spend points, they want you to buy all the new cards, but then they also want you to do evolutions. So it's kind of that hard balance of what do they choose. Now, maybe they could go a half and half, but we know that money talks always. It's it's just bound to. So we're going to look at some of the evolutions that you can do and, and some of the more favoured ones in the game completely. Also, if you are looking at evolutions on Footbin, you can have a look at evolution players. This will give you every evolution that's currently available and what people can go with. So you can see we got the brand new foundations. Very good evolution. I do like that they're not almost just forgetting about these foundations because last year we, we didn't we got the foundations into evolutions eventually. But they then got out of the uh, evolution, they got out of the card type of foundations and just went into something like an evolution's normal card. I like that they've kept it with them. Now that is a big gripe that we'll get to. But what you can do is if you are looking to build a Sunderland team, for instance, you can have a look here. You can click and we can see what players can go in and you can see all of the different links that you can go with. You can see that a few of them or most of them can go into the intro, intro to stat limits. We see Joe Bellingham being a big one, Dan Neal being another one, Alan. So you can kind of go with your team. This works for any team as well. So for instance, for my team that I try and build with evolutions that I 
don't want anybody else to go into. We obviously have got all of these. So you can see the cost of it as well. So if they've gone into one paid evolution or two, you've then obviously got a few of the others. We've got uh, Sunderland still in here as well. But you can see we've got Ericsson, McTominay. Now, obviously, it's not uh, balancing which ones are which because obviously you've kind of got to go with. You can select the evolutions as well, which ones you'd like to obviously get rid of and not. So always a nice thing, especially if you're not looking to pay for any of them and you just want the free, you can then obviously click apply and it will give you just the free ones. Um, some of them might have to go in double. So that's why the cost is there. I think, did I get that right? Oh, free, apply. Oh, do I have to click them all? Let me click them all. Unless, is it, let's have a go like that. I don't know, but <laughs> it's putting all of them in. We play possession. Do you have to pay for that one? No. Oh, so that might be right. I don't know. I don't know. But that is kind of what you're looking at in terms of if you're looking to build a specific team, you can go and have a look at all of the evolutions that you can go with. Um, like we said with the foundations, there's some great options here. For me, I think the biggest option you can go with is going to be what? Now, it's not necessarily a crazy evolution type. Like Obviously, it's giving ones, twos, and a four on the defending. So it's not like it's going absolutely nuts. But this is a great card, for instance, if you wanted to build your American team. We've seen Morgan. We've seen uh, Swanson. Smith is incredible. You've obviously got Tim Howard if you wanted a goalie. And then the two icons in themselves are already fantastic. You can add a next level to it and also Rodman. And she does play right wing. So that would be kind of one of the ones I would be looking at most of the time. You will also have the popular evolutions on Footbin as well. So we've seen a few players uh, trying to get this bronze CDM from Man City. Furlan Mendy, quite an easy one to be honest to, to get in. If you've got him untradeable, definitely worth having a look at because not only is it just giving the passing and dribbling an upgrade, which is where I'm a big fan of because I like that they're, they're not necessarily giving him a total upgrade. He still stays as an 84, but it's mental that he gets the free on the composure, free on, well, free on everything dribbling, free on everything on the passing as well. It's a nice little step up. It may not be crazy, but it's it's just something a little bit different. And like we've seen with a lot of these evolutions, you can see that, for instance, with this one, you get the passing and dribbling up by plus 20, but the max is 79. So if you have anybody with 59 passing, 59 dribbling, they will automatically go up to that 79 dribbling and passing, which I think is a very nice stat to have. When we look at somebody like Romero, having that extra ability to just have that little bit more on the passing, we see the composure go up to 98. Now, that is the difference where I'm thinking, is that going to be great going forward because already we're on 98 composure. We're going to start seeing them cards that have 99 agility balance and maybe like 75 to 80 ball control. But that's going to be an interesting point where you, what cards you choose is going to be the increase. As you see with Romero, even though the pace doesn't go up, you whack the shadow on him and already you're looking at a very good, well-rounded centre-back. 76 on the pace, 92 Drea Drea defending, 81 on the physical, then he's got 99 short pass, 98 composure, and 99 reactions as well. Add a play style plus to him later on, you're building yourself a nice Romero straight off the bat. Now, he does have an upgrade to him, which obviously can't be put into this evolution, but he does have that 20 pace upgrade, so it's almost like what do you choose? But I do think with what they're doing with these evolutions is decent for now. It's a very good starting mechanic for the game, but I want to see where it goes in like two months from now. Rashford obviously is another big one. Um, Power Shot Plus is absolutely massive for him. He is one of them cards that will be great with evolutions because whether he gets any upgrades is going to be a big one, to be honest. I, I don't know if he does or not, but this is a cracking one for right now. Now, granted, it is 50,000 coins or 800 points, but I do think for 50k, he is well worth the investment there because you're starting that evolution line for him. Whether we see an upgrade in the next month, in the next two months, that's going to be the big question of what you'd prefer to happen there. We look at like Delo, nice one. Endrick's going to be another big one that you can go with. Any evolution you can get on him is going to be perfect. We can at the moment get him to a max of 83 with all of the evolutions that are on at the moment. Um, obviously 82 for the Magic Knights. He will obviously then get into the intro to stat limit. But there is also the ability to give him that power shot plus with the ultimate edition evolution. Personally, what I've done, I've just not managed. I think I've done him in the ultimate evolution, but nothing since then. So again, depends on what route you're taking with them. 
We see Malin again. He was a fan favorite last year with all of the evolutions that you could put him in. So again, he's going to be another one that, that really sits in there. The Magic Knights, most of the paid evolutions tend to be semi better than everybody else uh, it, it's just it is what it is like that that is kind of the point of them um, they are slightly better because you've got to pay for them it, it's natural that they're going to do that the free ones are good enough but you will get more of a boost into that 85 with some very nice stats for that evolution specifically we then see a bit further down, you've got the likes of Soloff and Naki Williams coming in. We've got the same for Konate compared to what we saw with uh, Romero. He's obviously going to get a little bit of an upgrade with that lovely we play possession. You can see the passing going from that 59 all the way up to 79 as well. Again, get into the 91 composure. 99 short pass, 94 long. Doesn't quite get the bonus on the agility balance because he's already considerably low at 34 balance and 55 agility. But that really isn't too much of a problem. You go with a shadow, 83, 89, 84, then having the extra boost there. It just takes in that one step up. And I'm pretty sure you could have done another, I think it was it Sprint Supreme you could have done with him or something prior to this. I, I don't know if you could have or if that's gone. I'm pretty sure Sprint Supreme's gone, but it didn't really give him a massive upgrade. It was kind of like a little bit. So again, more extras that you can put together for that one specifically. You can also build your evolutions here and also on Footbin have my evolutions. So you can put them in and you can kind of see when they get a new upgrade if they can fit into it with the evolutions you've already put them in. It's a great thing to have if you are taking the evolutions quite seriously this year. And I think it's probably the best time too, to be honest. I think you could really build a solid team by the end of it. So I'm, I'm interested to see once we get into past team of the year, January, February, where people's evolutions teams are really coming in at. We've obviously got Gomez, another fan favorite when it comes to it. Um, he's, again, got multiple uh, kind of evolutions you can go with. You can make an 83 with 86 pace, very Van der Ven-esque. You've obviously got the we play uh, possession. Like, look at these stats across the board then. So if we go for probably better for an anchor because he still gets the 90 pace. 87, 87, 81 on the composure, a little bit lower because he only gets the 7. But then he's got decent short and long pass. It's a very well-rounded center back. He's coming in as an 87 overall. I, I don't think you could complain of that, especially if you are building that Liverpool team. Whack him next to Virgil. You're absolutely fine with that every single day of the week. As you go a bit further down, you will see a few of kind of like the silvers and bronzes that are coming in now, starting to get them evolutions. Correa is always a nice one. We've obviously got a tower room, but to be honest, I wouldn't bother. The big thing as well when it comes to doing an evolution you want to make sure that player's not getting an upgrade anytime soon. So like Romero, he's probably a safe bet at the moment. Granted, his road to the knockout can be upgraded still if they do well in the Europa. But with that card already being out, unless he gets an inform or something very specific like a player of the month... I don't think they'll give him another card for the next couple of promos. We know, for instance, Trailblazers out. Can't see him getting one there. It's too soon. Ultimate Dynasties... At least I don't know if he's got a brother playing in the game. So, again, he's going to be at least another month before he even gets considered for another card. That's going to be fantastic to start evolving him now into different stuff. Gravenbirch, great card in the Octopus. Now, and like I said, it's not necessarily going crazy right now because obviously with someone like Gravenbirch, it's a very good card. But he, then, then everybody's questions is, you've paid 50k for him. Is he truly that good compared to a De Jong, compared to a Bellingham? And that's that's really dependent on what you want from the game. I'm not saying all these evolutions are going to wipe out all the gold cards. Otherwise, there'd be no market. People would be cheaper than what they are. These are kind of just your cards you want to take to that next level before they get the upgrade. I guarantee Graven Birch does get an upgrade at some point. Last year, we didn't really see anything. He got, uh, what is it? Was that a road? There weren't a road to the knockout, was it? Or was it team at a tournament? Yeah, team at a group stage. So really, other than that, he didn't get anything. And eventually, you could make him into a 91 with footers. But that's all he got. So it is kind of one of them ones. Sometimes you might pick an absolute banger. Sometimes there's a card that gets 12 specials and your evolution rots in your club. It just is what it is. But then you look at Tamore. Again, another Endrick. You can see the patterns where you go because a lot of these can go into multiple different evolution paths and you can obviously see some of them like this guy um, obviously some of them are expired as well but you can take him pretty high up there from a silver and 
a big thing that everybody asks always with these, especially silvers and bronzes, is are they playing to the level of their stats? Like, them stats are pretty insane. We whack a hunter on him. Like, you're looking at 98, 90. He's a 93 left wing cam or right wing. That is some serious player right there. The problem you've got is they do have something called a silver build. And it's... I don't know if it's actually fully proven, but you can always tell the difference between somebody that is of a different build type. Normally, when you look at someone like Mbappe, he has his own, Haaland will have his own, CR7 does, Messi does, R9 does. They all have specific body types, and a lot of the golds tend to have better, better body types or better animations that are drilled into their specific character. So it'd be like somebody like, if you think back, like a Murtasaka. You could give Murtasak a 99 pace. If his body type is not right, he will always be worse than a Virgil, than a Gomez, because that is just how it's built into the game. Now, this guy definitely will be able to do something. Like His stats are going to be considerably better than a lot of the silvers, than a lot of the, the kind of random gold commons. But when you get into it, you put him up against a Furlan Mendy, you put him up against a Virgil, he's going to crumble just like everybody else. But it's nice to see that you can get somebody to this level already, but with an 85, that's the bit that I don't understand this year. We've seen it with someone like a Harry Kane. Um, for instance, if I go over to this side, if you look at this Harry Kane upgrade, um, for me, it's just nuts in itself. So he's gone up a plus one, which is fair enough. But then he's gained 15 on the pace, one shooting, one passing, two defending, one physical, two dribbling. That seems to be a massive upgrade for just a plus one. And it's the same with this guy. Realistically, if we look at these stats compared to someone like Kane, if, or in fact, if we go compared to Hansen, Hansen's a very high rated right winger. So we go for a 90. You look at the stats, so we've got 90, so he wins. He's got 85. She's got a two plus on that. 95 passing compared to the 88. So considerably better by a plus seven. 92 dribbling compared to that. 90, so two extra, better defending. Just free, better physical on Hansen. So realistically, she's got five overall stats that are better. I don't believe skill move or weak foot affect overall. So what is the difference of the overall of a plus five? That's the bit now where it's kind of getting a bit interesting. Obviously, the in-game stats are considerably better. The total stats are considerably better. And yet, we're still only the 85. Now, obviously, that's evolution terms. But that's the interesting part of what is the overall actually connected to because clearly it's not connected to the in-game stats so it's just an interesting point when it comes to it uh, obviously Salma's there Way's obviously a good one as well and as you go further and further down you can kind of see the ratings Werner's always a nice one we've already had a Gusto upgrade a Di Lorenzo's getting an upgrade Baude Ansu Fati he was a decent one from last year as well Adiemi's only got an 82 at the moment Zaire Emery's got an upgrade which to be honest isn't like crazy crazy better like plus eights yeah for a plus two is fantastic but i'm not gonna have to spend 370 on him in comparison to 65 and again it's it is probably better evolutions you could have gone with him as well so it's it's an interesting point with some of these cards of when they get that upgrade is it better to just go for their next upgrade if rashford gets an 87 uh, trailblazer is that going to be considerably better than the magic knights one you've done already that's going to be the point where evolutions could just hold you back from just needing to upgrade a card. And you just wait for the next evolution. Because once he gets a card, the likely chance of him getting another one very soon, other than an inform, a player of the month, which is likely to be lower rated than, his, than, his, uh, than say, his Trailblazer anyway, that's the interesting part of the game where you could just hold on to that evolution and hope they give you that evolution to, to take him to that next level already. Doku was another great one with it. He's obviously got himself the 87 for the road to the knockout. Can be upgraded to an 89, which is looking very, very likely. But it's an interesting one that we can't get him any further on the upgrade scale yet. Likely chances we'll end up with like an 85 or an 86 once that 87 has managed to get up at least a plus one to take him a bit further away. Now, they're kind of the best evolutions we've got at the moment. Um, we've got no keeper as of yet. I'll be interested to see if they did one for that. I think... I don't, we might have had like one or two, but I don't think we had really many 
goalkeeper evolutions last year. So it will be interesting to see if we do get one this year and we can finally make a full evolution team going forward. But we've got pretty much everything. We've got fullbacks, center backs, box to boxes, heavy DMs, cams, left wing, right wing and strikers. So we can have pretty much a whole team. At the moment, I think I've got like 12 evolution players from all of the ones we've got. Very few have been really doubled. Um, when we look at someone like Maynou, is a great evolution uh, kind of card at the moment because you can make him either into the 85 through intro to the stat limits in Great Guti. Uh, there was another one as well. I don't know if... Can I find his evolutions path? Uh, where's the expired ones? Uh, they're just the combination, so you can't see them yet, but basically had a couple of different ones that you could put him into um, that made him a little bit higher rated using two, and then Great Guti came out and went straight to 85. So there is a few different ways to get him. If you don't do it on the first one, there'll always be another one later on in the game. So let me know down below the comment your favorite best evolution you've made so far, and let me know how they're getting on. Peace.